Look at this map. It is like most maps of the world. It shows the continent of Africa as if it is as small as Greenland. This is quite annoying because, in reality, Africa is the second biggest continent in the world after Asia. Africa is so massive that you can fit the entire United States of America and not one, but two Europes in it and still have space to fill. I merely stated this fact to give you an idea of how large Africa's notoriously unforgiving, hot, and dry Sahara Desert is. It's even expanding in many areas because that's what deserts do when the climate is favorable for desertification while little is done to prevent land degradation. This is why Africa launched a unique mega project that stretches over 20 states aimed at establishing a green belt around the Sahara Desert called the Great Green Wall. Why is fighting the ever-expanding Sahara Desert so important? What is the Great Green Wall? And how will this immense green wall become a reality? As I said earlier, Africa is massive at 30.37 million square kilometers, with nearly 40% of it agricultural land and another 22% forests. Nevertheless, the sheer size of the continent and its diverse climate also make it home to the world's largest, hottest, driest, and most fascinating desert. It is the famous Sahara, a desert spanning across North Africa, covering an area of 9.2 million square kilometers, or about the size of the United States of America. The Sahara is by all means very dry, hot, and incredibly huge. It covers large parts of Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Western Sahara and Sudan, and parts of southern Morocco and Tunisia. It extends from the Atlantic Ocean in the west to the Red Sea in the east, with a maximum length of 5,900 kilometers or 3,670 miles. Its width varies depending on the area, from 600 to 1,800 kilometers. Contrary to what many think, the Sahara is not empty and its population is actually increasing. It is currently home to more than 3.5 million people and rising. Needless to say, it is a very, very dry desert and water is extremely scarce, except that found in a few oases scattered here and there. The only reason the population in this unforgiving, scorching desert is rising can be attributed to the discovery of massive amounts of oil and gas in countries like Algeria and Libya and uranium in Niger. Other abundant minerals in the Sahara include iron, phosphorus, and manganese. Its ecoregion encompasses the Sahara's hyper-arid center region, where rainfall is scarce and irregular. Sand dunes, stone platius, gravel plains, arid valleys, and salt flats. It is not a dead place because some types of trees, such as cactus, date palms, and acacia grow in there despite the cruel heat and almost non-existent water sources. Since 1920, tracking and record keeping of the Sahara Desert expansion shows that it has grown by as much as 10%. Farming communities within proximity to its border have also been losing the battle against land degradation. This fact, combined with the discovery of important natural resources and the corresponding rise in population, meant one thing. This colossal desert needs close attention and serious measures to prevent further expansion. This is why the idea of the Great Green Wall emerged in an official, serious manner back in 2007 and is now beginning to manifest into a reality. Before we shock you with what is exactly the Great Green Wall of Africa, let's decipher the why build it part in a little more detail. Okay, let's start with what is happening in areas that separate the Sahara Desert from adjacent arable land. These areas have been declining due to land degradation, which typically stems from both human-related and natural factors. In some areas, over-farming and or over-grazing, coupled with poor water resources management, contributed to increased desertification. 
However, experts agree that climate change and extreme weather are the most common causes of land degradation. They also confirm that land degradation poses serious threats to agricultural productivity, food security, and quality of life. An example of this is Sub-Sahara, which is the area and regions of the continent of Africa that lie south of the Sahara. In this region and the Sahel areas of the Sahara, the combination of human activities and natural climate cycles are causing serious hardships for the people there because the desert is advancing and ruining arable land. Believe it or not, land degradation is one of the reasons why some Central African nations experienced serious political unrest and even civil wars throughout the 2000s. An example of this is the drought that augmented a brutal civil war in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is still experiencing the most dramatic loss of vegetation in the region. Allow me to clarify here that desertification is the eventual result of untreated land degradation. This usually happens in semi-arid areas that border deserts. This, for example, caused millions of families devastated by desertification to migrate. We can reference here the migration from Niger to Nigeria as the Sahara blew dust across the country. This is why nations that host and border the Sahara Desert collectively agreed to literally encircle the entire Sahara Desert with a well-managed and sustainable green wall of forests, farms, parklands, and grazelands. The logic behind the Great Green Wall is simple. Wherever there is a will, there is a hope. And wherever there is water, there is life. And life gives hope. Sustainability is the core of this project because some countries such as Libya and Algeria tried in the past to eliminate desertification and all forms of land degradation, but sort of failed due to a lack of focus on long-term sustainability and the common mistake of planting non-compatible vegetation and trees that did not die from the lack of water or extreme heat, but rather tree diseases. Okay, it is now time to take a detailed look at what the Great Green Wall is and how it will be achieved. Initially, the Great Green Wall was supposed to be 15 kilometers wide and 7,775 kilometers long, extending from Djibouti on the Red Sea to Dakar in Senegal on the Atlantic Ocean. It was supposed to pass through 11 countries. However, nations such as Egypt, Algeria, Libya, Morocco, and Sudan, among other nations, are jumping on the Great Green Wall wagon and are now officially part of the program. Fortunately, no one is going to call Chinese and German firms to come and engineer anything because the whole project is based on reclaiming and reviving arable land, forests, and grazelands while establishing new ones, all via the utilization of modern farming techniques and related science, while making water sustainability matters a priority. The African Union and numerous international organizations, such as the World Bank, have allocated as much as $15 billion for the project, with more than $2.5 billion already dispersed. Many of you expect me now to list the approach that will be used as a standard in this unique mega project, but in reality, there is not a single approach. Instead, every country involved in this project will apply its own unique or a replicated integrated landscape approach within its local context. Another intriguing goal behind the Great Green Wall is fighting high levels of malnourishment across the Sahel region. This will be implemented by planting resilient fruit trees, such as palm and fig trees, that, in a few years, will become a source of nutrients for the locals. Millions of people will benefit from this self-sustaining, by-design mega-project as they return to land they were forced to abandon due to land degradation and the ruthless dust and heat of the majestic Sahara Desert. We love hearing from you, so please let us know what you think in the comments section. Thank you for watching, and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon.